Before we begin, I'd like to say that free speech is under assault like never before. The 25th Amendment is of zero risk to me, but will come back to haunt Joe Biden and the Biden administration. As the expression goes, be careful what you wish for. And now I'd like to briefly address the events of last week. Millions of our citizens watched on Wednesday as a mob stormed the Capitol and trashed the halls of government. As I have consistently said throughout my administration, we believe in respecting America's history and traditions, not tearing them down. We believe in the rule of law, not in violence or rioting. Uh, they're dividing and divisive, and they're showing something that I've been predicting for a long time. I've been predicting it for a long time, and people didn't act on it. But I think big tech has made a terrible mistake and very, very bad for our country. And that's leading others to do the same thing. And it causes a lot of problems and a lot of danger. Uh, big mistake. They shouldn't be doing it. But uh, there's always a counter move when they do that. I've never seen such anger as I see right now. And that's a terrible thing. Terrible thing. And you have to always avoid violence. And we have, we have tremendous support. We have support probably like nobody's ever seen before. Always have to avoid Mr. violence. President, what is your role in what happened at the Capitol? What is your personal responsibility? So if you read my speech, and many people have done it, and I've seen it both uh, in the papers and in the media, on television, uh, it's been analyzed, and people thought that what I said was totally appropriate. And if you look at what other people have said, politicians at a high level, about the riots during the summer, the horrible riots in Portland and Seattle and various other, other places. That was a real problem, what they said. But they've analyzed my speech and my words and my final paragraph, my final sentence, and everybody to the T thought it was totally appropriate. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just so we're clear about what you just saw, while Trump is at risk of being removed from office by either the 25th Amendment or impeachment, his response to this was that it would haunt Joe Biden. His response was to lob a threat at Joe for the fact that he himself is facing removal from office. Even after inciting a literal insurrection that led to the deaths of a police officer and a number of his own supporters, still his only reaction is to lash out and threaten everyone else. In case you were wondering whether he was ready to yet again debut a new tone. He even says, be careful what you wish for, with the implication being that Democrats have opened up Pandora's box and that it'll come to bite them next time. But here's the thing. I'm pretty sure we don't have to worry about this Democratic president inciting an insurrection. I don't know what it is, but my gut just tells me that we're probably in the clear when it comes to Joe Biden radicalizing his supporters and encouraging them to riot in the halls of the Capitol. And that should tell you just how broken Trump's brain is, that he thinks there's any equivalency to what he's doing and what any other sane human would do. As if any of this is normal, as if any future president would ever lead an insurrection against the government that he or she is supposed to be running. This isn't some slippery slope, this is accountability. But that delusion aside, when Trump finally does address the events at the Capitol, it lasts all of 22 seconds. 22 seconds of prepared remarks off a teleprompter where he drones on with the enthusiasm of a five-year-old who was just given a plate of broccoli. An armed insurrection at the US Capitol for the first time in 219 years, since the British in the War of 1812, and all Donald Trump could manage to eke out was 22 seconds where he pretended that he doesn't believe in violence. If Donald Trump doesn't believe in violence, he should probably tell that to Donald Trump. In reality, the violence was the direct result of Trump and his allies' own words. You could draw a straight line from the rhetoric that we've heard from the White House and the mayhem that occurred at the U.S. Capitol. Now it is up to Congress to confront this egregious assault on our democracy. And after this, we're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down. Anyone you want, but I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong.
Stand up and fight. Stand up and hold your representatives accountable. And if we're wrong, we will be made fools of. But if we're right, a lot of them will go to jail. So, 